Good day, everyone. Thank you for joining us in our Hawk Talk session today. Today we'll be talking to developing QT applications on the Hawk board. For Ben to be our presenter. If you have any questions during this session, since the phone line will be muted as for Ben presents, you may type those questions into the chat window of your WebEx screen. I'll be reading off those questions at the closure of the course. Or you may hold your questions and ask them verbally as we open the bridge line at the end. Thank you very much for joining us today, and we hope you enjoy the session. Presentation mode is now enabled. For Ben, the floor is yours. Thank you, uh, Lori. So uh, welcome everyone to this hot talk section. Uh, we'll be covering uh, the topic, how to develop QT applications. <laughs> My name is Parun Sundaresan, I'm the CI and Traffic Technologies. So uh, this is sort of agenda of what we are going to cover today in the, uh, in the, in the, uh, in the one hour. Uh, we'll go through the licensing model and the quick history of uh, QT, how we can We'll go over the fundamental concepts of, uh, you know, what the software stack or typical application uh, and the frame of environment would look like. Uh, we would go through uh, some of the core components like the graphics view framework and the screen slot mechanism. We will also cover how to configure and build QT for the target platform, in this case the hardboard. Uh, we look at the tools which come along with QT, uh, in this case a QT creator that allows us to create uh, multiple uh, user interfaces. Uh, we will uh, uh, go to the second half of the presentation, we will cover the SKS first, which is the graphics toolkit that, uh, uh, that, we, uh, that we have provided uh, for, uh, uh, for our course. Uh, we will uh, go through a live demo of how we can develop a very simple QT application uh, in, in uh, two minutes with, uh, with this toolkit. And uh, we'll uh, close the session with uh, tips for performance on the QT development and uh, a complete comparison with other frameworks that are available. And then we'll leave the floor open for questions. Uh, so going over the QT history, so uh, this was an offering from Proltech, uh, so which is now a part of Nokia after the Nokia bottom. Uh, and, uh, uh, you know, when it started, it was not, uh, 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 you know, uh, an open source component or a framework. So right now, uh, you know, after Nokia uh, bought Caltech, so the source code has been offered as an open source, under the open source license in LGPL and other uh, open source licenses with multiple support options. Uh, there are, uh, uh, so, uh, so there are certain dependencies like the, uh, you know, the Linux side, uh, there are the framework for components that it depends on and uh, on the WinC side, uh, we have uh, we have other dependencies, but overall the QT is runtime uh, works across the Linux framework for WinC, uh, X Windows, and uh, even on Android. And it's a complete evolving framework. So uh, in the you know uh, per year, typically you see uh, one or two major releases coming out of the uh, QT shop. So what are the licensing models that uh, uh, you know that QT offers? So, uh, so uh, there are three major licenses. One is the commercial, uh, the LGPL license, and the uh, GPL V3 uh, license. And this table compares the three licenses against various parameters. So, uh, uh, the commercial license uh, involves a uh, license fee that needs to be paid to uh, Nokia for support and uh, and uh, regular core releases. Uh, uh, so, this is a paid support model. The LGPL and GPL are uh, uh, typical open source models. Uh, and uh, the regular LGPL and GPL model supply where any changes we make to the uh, support date needs to be provided back to the community, uh, to the uh, to the code uh, framework, uh, in both in the case of LGPL and uh, GPL, and uh, in applies uh, in terms of dynamic and static linking uh, between LGPL and GPL. In the case of uh, commercial uh, license, so there is no obligation to disclose the source code. And uh, uh, so we can also get uh, uh, an agreement uh, with uh, Nokia for uh, for maintenance and support. And uh, the key thing to note here is uh, any application that you develop with LGTL uh, license, so the distribution is royalty free, and uh, you can uh, you know you can, you can go to production without any uh, any further uh, uh, money involved. 
Okay, so going on to the, uh, you know, how the software stack looks like. So typically, uh, the, uh, as we discussed before, so there are multiple backend options which are available for the QT runtime. So here we are, uh, uh, I'm just showing you the two options, one for on the Linux side and on the right side you have the Windows uh, uh, side of things. So, uh, so there are two options on, uh, on the Linux side of things. So one is the, which is called as the QT embedded option. Which is uh, uh, which is a very uh, simple and lightweight uh, uh, component or a, a model within Qt, which allows you to directly use the frame buffer for its operations with the, along with the simple window manager. And the other option is with the with the native X11 uh, uh, X backend, so which uh, uh, you know which which can use again other backends like Ssb or Cairo uh, most commonly. Uh, so so these are the two options available on on the Linux side. Uh, on the WinC side, so we have the regular windowing system and the uh, Electra backends on the, you know, on the WinC side. So it just, just shows the stack here. So the key things, the other key things to note here are there are, uh, uh, you know, there's a, uh, I mean, there's a standard UX manager available which allows us to uh, plug in various uh, touch screens and uh, mouse and other input uh, devices. And uh, there is a screen manager which allows us to create multiple screens and components both in terms of uh, QT embedded as well as on the X side. Uh, so I have a position here at Xbox, which is a toolkit that, uh, you know, that uh, TA is uh, providing, which can write on top of QT. So therefore, you can, uh, any application that you develop or, or benchmark using this can potentially run across uh, any operating system. Okay, so uh, going ahead to the next uh, uh, slide. So, uh, so this slide talks about the typical uh, overall system design. Uh, and uh, so if you look at it, there are uh, from a uh, user point of view, there is a, there is an input component which, uh, which always drives the system. Uh, there is an environment component which, uh, for example, an uh, I2S or, uh, you know, some other driver which, which uh, drives the system. So these are the two, uh, two uh, uh, things that drive a typical system uh, in terms of events. For example, it could be a sensor or a networking event which happens, or it could be a mouse or a, a touchscreen input uh, in the case of the user input. So this is typically uh, within various frameworks. In QT also has its own event loop, which handles uh, multiple input events, either in terms of uh, uh, input devices or in terms of, uh, you know, other application defined environment inputs. So these events are typically handled by either by QT's own native input event handlers or by the uh, application defined event handlers. So these are, uh, uh, you know, fed back to the user in terms of uh, the uh, GUI on the screen or uh, they are fed back also to uh, certain other systemic changes like maybe you're uh, increasing the voltage or uh, maybe uh, showing a power factor change or, you know, driving some motor depending upon the input. So, uh, so these are the output changes in terms of the environment that is controlled by the uh, by the in environment input again. So this is a typical application stack. Now, in the next slide, so let's go over again as to how uh, each of these uh, uh, fall inside. Uh, uh, you know, how QT handles uh, some of these in the uh, coming slides. So, uh, just a brief introduction to you know how the hardware uh, relates to QT and what the dependencies are. So, uh, in terms of the Linux. Package. So the primary dependency for Qt is the, uh, the frame buffer component, uh, the frame buffer driver. So, uh, so this is uh, provided by the hardware package in multiple uh, distributions. Uh, uh, so, so that's, that's one driver which is already available. And uh, the frame buffer interface uh, provides and exposes the display component uh, and its resolution that is, uh, that is available, uh, like uh, whether it's uh, uh, different sizes of uh, touch screens or monitors. So that's the resolution which should be natively adopted by the QT runtime, and uh, all the applications will be displayed onto the selected screen. So uh, currently the maximum resolution supported on the half board is uh, VGA 16 bits per pixel resolution. Uh, so, uh, so if you're already familiar with the hardware, you can connect the VGA monitor to it and see the output. Uh, the QT embedded, uh, uh, there are two uh, distributions, uh, the two models that we talked about, so only the QT embedded and uh, the QTX uh, uh, backend. So QT embedded always outputs to a full screen and along with the simple window system, so you'll always see a full screen output. Uh, VGX, which is a composition manager, you can have multiple windows and, uh, you know, uh, so QT operates as a client. Uh, there are uh, input devices uh, which are uh, which are also supported by the hardware and uh, the queue running on the hardware. Uh, 
for example, you can have a USB mouse connected and control the, uh, the various events or you could connect a touch screen uh, plus a monitor and uh, control the various events and, uh, uh, and also you can use the key keyboard for uh, certain applications like browsing applications or a thin plant kind of application. So, uh, so uh, and in terms of peripherals, the hotboard has support for rather uh, peripherals like uh, uh, hard disk drives and other USB devices which can also be used for creating a complete system. And QT can be used as an application framework uh, to develop uh, the components and the driver stack for those applications. So, uh, let's go over to what exactly does QT provide in terms of uh, uh, application development ease of use. So uh, this is just a, a quick summary of all the applications of the classes that are provided by Q. Uh, so as you can see on the right side, so we have uh, 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 we have uh, uh, a networking component, we have XML component, uh, we have multimedia components, uh, you know, which allow us to play multimedia. Uh, we have a stripping component, which allows us to design nice looking UIs without, without too much of code. Uh, we have a WebKit browser, which comes natively embedded into uh, and supported by QT. Uh, and uh, uh, so there are other classes uh, like you know vector graphics uh, support, uh, various kinds of texture loading support, which uh, you know which are hidden behind the back background here. Uh, OpenGL 3D engine is natively supported, uh, though uh, uh, in the case of our board, uh, uh, you know we don't have a 3D engine, so this is primarily applicable for uh, devices like the OMAP 3, uh, which is a Cortex 8 plus uh, SGX uh, 3D accelerator. So uh, these are the application the backend classes where you have a, a 2D graphics canvas engine, which is a graphics view, which I'll be talking about soon, and the core engine. Okay, so uh, moving on to, uh, let's uh, uh, start looking at how we can create a, a front end uh, for your application uh, uh, using the uh, classes that we have discussed uh, uh, in the previously in the previous slide. So, uh, the steps are summarized uh, here. So, uh, so typically you cross compile QT for the target, in this case the hotboard, using a specific cross compiler. So, we'll talk about those steps in the later slide. Uh, and we, there is a tool called QT Creator or QT Designer that allows us to various what widget types that we need to use. For example, we can have a uh, we can have a widget that allows I mean that is a rectangular widget. We can control its background colors. We can control its size and its various parameters, the event handlers. Uh, we can decide we can decide all of that within the uh, within the QT create itself. Uh, then the next step would be to add the necessary event handlers for that particular widget that we created in the UI uh, in a separate file. And add the necessary application level code, for example, to be a motor control. Uh, create the necessary project file. The PR, dot .pro is the uh, project file for uh, for the applications involving QT. Uh, then we have the build and install steps uh, for QT, and uh, uh, typically then there is a debug process where, where, where you can uh, debug directly on the target for uh, uh, for various peripherals uh, using the standard uh, Linux tools, as well as QT also provides uh, a certain set of debug features. So this is a summary of how you create a simple uh, uh, simple summary of how you create a UI. So we'll go over some of these in detail uh, in the next set of slides. 